So this video is on triangles that are inside circles. So before I start this video, I just want to define a couple of terms. If we have a triangle that is inside a circle, such that all of the corners or vertices of the triangle touch the circumference of the circle, that's important, it has to actually touch the circle. This circle is known as the circumcircle of the triangle. So the circumcircle just means that it is a circle surrounding a triangle. The important thing though is that all of the corners of the triangle have to be touching uh, the circle though. And the centre of this circle, which we'll say is somewhere about here, let's say, the centre of this circle is known as the circumcenter. The circumcenter is just the centre of the circle surrounding the triangle. So if you ever see uh, these two terms in question, just know that the uh, the circumcircle is a circle that surrounds a triangle and the circumcenter is the center of that circle. So the key property that you need to know for triangles in circles is that if one of the sides of a triangle in a circle is the diameter, the angle opposite to that side will be 90 degrees and this is always the case. So if we do some examples, so if the sides of the triangle here is the diameter such as it passes through uh, the center like this then the opposite angle will be a right angle this is on the presumption of the fact again though that all of the sides of the triangle are touching the side of uh, the circle because otherwise it's not really defined as a triangle in a circle so we could do another example where it's like this and like this and once again it will always be a 90 degree angle and this is the diameter and this is always the case as long as the side is the diameter and all of the corners of the triangle are touching the circumference of the circle. So this is really, really common for them to use in questions, so always look out for this. I've seen a lot of questions where they give you three points, let's say A, B and C, they give you three points and they ask you to prove that the line AB is the diameter, like as we can see uh, the case here that AB is the diameter here. And they will ask you to prove this. Well, the way you can uh, prove this is by proving that this angle here is 90 degrees, because then you can prove that this uh, is the um, diameter here. Um, and we can prove uh, this angle is 90 degrees by finding the gradient of AC and finding the gradient of BC and then proving that they're negative reciprocals of each other because remember that uh, for perpendicular lines that are 90 degrees from each other they will have negative reciprocal gradients so therefore if you prove this that uh, this gradient is m and this gradient is minus 1 over m therefore you have proved that this is a 90 degree angle and therefore that AB is the diameter of the circle. So this is an exam question that I see all the time where they give you the points A, B and C and they want you to prove that the line AB is the diameter of the circle. So as I'm always saying, if they don't give it to you, I would always draw a very quick diagram in order to kind of uh, see what's going on. I'm not going to include an axis again. And it says that the line AB is the diameter. So if we say A is about here and we say that B is about here and let's just say that C is up here 
we need to prove that the line AB is the diameter of the circle. And the way we can do this is by proving that the angle ACB, this little kind of uh, thing here indicates that we're talking about an angle, the angle ABC is equal to 90 degrees. So we need to be able to prove this. So we know uh, A and we know B and we know C. So we can find the gradient of line AC, which is going to be 3 minus 0 over 8 minus minus 1, which if you put this into a calculator, it's going to be equal to 1 over 3. So that is the gradient of AC. And the gradient of BC, which is this line here, is equal to 3 minus 0 over 8 minus 9. And if you put this into a calculator, it's going to be equal to 1 uh, is equal to minus 3. So that is the gradient of BC. And as we can see, these two are negative reciprocals of each other. So they're going to require, though, um, as, as it's a proof, they're going to require some sort of like sentence at the end. Um, so what I would say is, as the gradients of lines AC and BC are negative reciprocals of each other. Angle ACB is equal to 90 degrees, so AB or the line AB more specifically, the line AB is the diameter. And that is an acceptable sentence to put at the end. And therefore we have proved, because these two are negative reciprocals, these two gradients are negative reciprocals of each other, that this is a 90 degree angle and therefore AB is the diameter. So the spec specifically says that you should be able to find the equation of a circumcircle of a triangle with given vertices. This sounds quite complicated, but what this uh, means is that you need to be able to find the equation of a circle if you are given three points on the circle. So there are two different circumstances for which the, this can occur and you need to approach both of them differently. I'll go through the second circumstance in a sec. The first circumstance in which this can happen is when one of the sides of the triangle or one of the lines that connects the points is the diameter. And this is the case for this one uh, uh, that we've gone through just now where A B, the line AB, is uh, the uh, diameter um, of the circle. So the way we'd approach this is because the centre of the circle is on the diameter, we can find the centre of the circle very easily as just being the midpoint between A and B. If you think about this, because that's how diameter works, we talked about this um, before. So the midpoint of A and B up here, I'm just going to do this in my head quickly, so the midpoint of minus 1 and 9 is going to be 4, and the midpoint of 0, 0 is obviously 0. So therefore, we know that the centre of the circle is going to be 4, 0. So therefore, we've got the centre of the circle, so we're halfway to finding the equation of the circle. The other thing that we need to know is the radius, but this is easy because all we just need to do is find the distance between the centre and 1 of the points on the circumference. It doesn't matter uh, which one because they're all going to say much. You can do either one. I'm just going to use the minus one zero because that looks like the easiest one. So if we use a distance formula, D is equal to, and we're going to do the center and the uh, point A, it's going to be four minus minus one squared plus zero minus zero squared. And if you put this into a calculator, or you can just see it quite easily, this is going to be equal to 5. So therefore the radius of the circle is going to be equal to 5. So now we can write the equation of the circle as x minus 4 squared 
plus y minus 0 squared, because the centre is 0, but we can just write this as y squared. So whenever a coordinate is 0, you can just write it as y squared, is equal to 5 squared, which is equal to 25. And this is the equation of the circle, and this is how you figure out the uh, equation of the circle when you're given three points on the circumference when one of the sides is the diameter. We'll go through the second um, circumstance in a sec. We need to find the equation of a circle that's different. And um, really quick, to check if this answer is right, um, if you wanted to, um, you could sub these points in to the equation as x and y and you should get the value of 25 out and therefore if you do sub the value of these points in you do get 25 out so therefore that is a good way of checking that you've got the right answer as the points a b and c lie on the circumference of the circle which is what you're expecting. The second type of question is when uh, one of the three lines that connects the three points is not the diameter and we have to approach this in a very different way. So for example, let's say uh, that the three points are here, here, and here, that lines that connect to these points are like this, this is the triangle, and as you can see, none of these lines are the diameters, they don't pass through the centre. Although usually um, the question will not really talk about triangles, it will more just talk about three uh, points uh, on the circle. Uh, for ex uh, another example would be if the points were here, here, and here, and if you put these lines in, you will see that none of the sides of the triangle goes through the center, so none of the sides are the diameter. And let's just do another example. Uh, let's say that the points are here, here, and here. If we connect the points on the circle, none of the lines are the diameter because they don't go through the center. So this is a, a problem because the way we did it before is uh, we found uh, one of the sides was diameter and then we found the midpoint of that um, side and therefore that was the center. Therefore we found the center of the uh, circle and then we could easily find the radius. Now the problem is is that we can't do that here because obviously we don't have the diameter so we can't do the midpoint and find the center. So this is a bit of a problem. So how do we approach this question? Well let's connect, let's say that we know the points A, B, and C, and let's connect these uh, two points here, A and B, to create the chord AB. Now, this isn't the diameter, um, but it's a chord. Now, if you remember from the previous video about the properties of chords and the tangents and chords properties um, video, you will remember that the perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the center of the circle, it's a perpendicular bisector, so it's 90 degrees here, and it splits into two equal parts indicated by this line. And the centre of the circle, uh, the perpendicular bisector passes um, through it. And we can find an equation for the perpendicular bisector as we went through um, before, uh, as we can find the gradient of uh, the chord AB, and therefore the, uh, the gradient of the perpendicular bisector is going to be the negative reciprocal, is they're perpendicular. And we can find a point on the perpendicular bisector by finding the midpoint between A and B. So we can find the equation of this perpendicular bisector. However, this isn't much use to us because we won't be able to figure out the centre from here. We know that the centre lies on the perpendicular bisector, but we don't know the x or the y coordinates because we don't know where on the perpendicular bisector is going to be. So this doesn't help us. However, let's draw in another chord. Let's do BC. Let's draw in BC. And again, the perpendicular bisector of this uh, chord will also pass through the centre of the circle. It's a perpendicular bisector, so it's 90 degrees, and it's going to split it into two equal parts. And we alluded to this slightly in the previous video, but the perpendicular bisector of two... Uh, so the point of intersection between two perpendicular bisectors will pass through the center of the circle. We can find the, uh, the equation of this perpendicular bisector as well. And as we can find the equation of the, both of the perpendicular bisectors, we can find the point of intersection between them, and this will be equal to the center.
So therefore, we can find the centre of the circle as this, as the uh, point of intersection between these two perpendicular bisectors. And therefore, we can then find the radius by just finding the distance between the centre, which we can find out, and one of the points on the circumference. It doesn't matter uh, which uh, one can be either of them. Um, and therefore, we can then find the radius. So therefore, we can find the centre and the radius in this way, and therefore we can find an equation of uh, the circle. Um, so the important thing here is that two perpendicular bisectors' point of intersections uh, for two chords are going to be the centre of the circle.